Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I had a drink with alcohol in it, you guys. This picture is a Terramazoo martini. It had Kahlua, it had Irish cream, it had double shot espresso vodka, and there was even chocolate in it. It was good. And we were celebrating. We were celebrating because I'm finally going to get the keys to the new house. It's coming faster and faster. I couldn't be happier. All right, let's jump in with both feet and get started. There is, once again, a lot to cover. Let's go. All right, we're starting off a premier sous chef. They're advertising for one at Buckingham Palace to help support the head chef. Now, the person that they want uh, will not only be feeding the monarch, but also staff and guests at big state banquets that are attended by the king. And um, you're going to help lead a team, the ad says, of talented professionals in the royal kitchen. Now, the ad says you'll be joining a team of 30 people operating from six different residences. So the scope and variety is second to none. And they're looking for somebody who also can cook vegan. They're saying that they need to see impressive night skills and plant-based knowledge. Interesting. And the listing also says, you're a highly qualified and skilled chef with experience at a senior level from a fine dining or five-star catering operation. There you go. So if you can cook and you can cook vegan, put in your application. Get ready to start whipping up some food for King Charles. All right, moving on. All right, moving on. King Charles and Camilla. Uh, Camilla's sister, Annabelle, was married to businessman Simon Elliott for 50 years. Um, it was reported that they even joined Charles and Camilla on their honeymoon. And of course, uh, Mr. Elliot passed away at the age of 82 earlier this month. The service took place at Holy Trinity Church in, oh my God, in a town in Dorset. I'm not even going to try to say that. The police were really nice about the whole thing and that they sealed off the roads to the church during the service to allow his coffin to be driven through the small village. And following the service, guests were seen making their way to the local pub called the White Horse Inn. So although apparently there are no photos of Charles or Camilla at the funeral, it's understood that they did attend in a show of support to um, Camilla's sister. I, I mean, if my sister was married to somebody for 50 years and he died, I'd go to the funeral. I mean, that's just, that's crazy. Anyway, the church is where the funeral of Camilla's brother, Mark Shand, and her father, Major Bruce Shand, had previously been held. They were married when Camilla's sister was 23 years old. Uh, and it was the sister's 50th birthday party at the Ritz Hotel, just as a little bit of information, where Camilla stole the limelight by coming out as Charles's partner. They used that occasion to pose for their first public pictures together on the steps of the hotel. Very interesting. All right, here we go. Prince Andrew again. We all know he stepped back from public life with the scandal. We all know what's going on. I'm not going to bring it out again. But there um, is an event being held at Windsor. It's held to celebrate personal loyalty and service to the royal family. And apparently, Andrew is going. He's going to be mingling with about 600 guests, they said, including Charles and Prince Edward. Now, people are saying that he should not be allowed to go after the indiscretions. And a former MP named Norman Baker, who is a serving member of the Privy Council, said Andrew is doing this because he's going to any length possible to worm his way back into public life. And the only order he should be given is the order of the boot. <laughs> he said he's not. He simply is being allowed to play dress up as a royal for the day when he should be serving a very long period of silence. Somebody else, though, said that he's a member, so they can't stop him from going, even if he wanted to. 
All right, next up, um, Catherine's brother put up an Instagram post for Mother's Day, and people went crazy going, ooh, there's Catherine in the background dancing. Well, they must have some eagle eyes, because, yeah. Mm. All right, moving on. Next up, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, not Kate Middleton, um, left the palace and went to the boardroom to host a meeting with global companies to help gain support for her early years project. She's launching a business task force on early education with firms like Ikea and Lego and a couple of other companies I've never heard of as like Unilever. So today she hosted an inaugural meeting of the task force at Not West's headquarters in the city of London with Aviva Co-op and Iceland among other major companies that were there. So, of course, everybody went on about her gorgeous outfit. You should know that uh, every single item she had on was a rear wear. Yes, it was. And when she got up in front of everybody, she said, I'm standing here in front of you to ask you, some of Britain's most influential business leaders, for your support in helping create the societal change that is needed. Yes, spot on, Catherine. And a big thank you to Remulad Sauce, just as an FYI, for the information on the outfit. She asked people at the meeting to think more radically. Now, what I find interesting about this task force is that the business task force for early education is run by businesses for businesses. Okay, it follows the launch of Shaping Us, the campaign spearheaded by Catherine that she said was her life's work, which aims at raising the profile of youngsters' early years development. But the point is, these companies are invested in it because they can make money with it. And I mean, no company is going to go in without it. You guys know that. I think it's wonderful what she's doing. You know what I find so funny? When the meeting was over, Catherine went to the roof terrace and she stood there and said, I don't feel qualified to be standing on the balcony. <laughs> this, this building is Nat West headquarters in the city of London. Next up, we're going to go back to Charles and Camilla. Don't forget that they're supposed to visit uh, pa uh, Paris soon. They're supposed to go to France. And there's been violence because there's been pension reforms pushed through by uh, Mr. Macron. So apparently it's being reported that Buckingham Palace is quote unquote monitoring the situation because that's his first scheduled state visit later this week. And um, if they can't uh, get this under control, they may have to not go. Interesting. Yeah, they're supposed to arrive in Paris on Sunday uh, for their first state visit. And they're saying right now there's been no suggestion of it canceling, but they're going to keep an eye. All right, move it on. All right, next up, I just wanted to touch on this. You know, Princess Beatrice's husband has a son, Wolfie, with another woman, and that's an American architect. I didn't realize that the woman had moved to London so she could be in close proximity. Love it. All right, moving on. Next up, I saw this article. I just wanted to touch on it. The person that is actually organizing the coronation, his name is Earl Marshall. And apparently this is a hereditary position that's been within his family since 1672. It gets passed down. Could you imagine the pressure? I guess that means that his father is probably the one who arranged um, Charles's mother's coronation. That's just, that's just, yeah, crazy. All right, moving on. Moving on, you guys, um, these articles are coming out saying that Harry and Meghan are already tainting the coronation by not giving their RSVP. You know, uh, you know, supposedly they won't say whether they're going and they've given a list of demands. We want to be on the balcony and blah, blah, blah. And people now are saying, you know, Charles, you can't give in this as weak. But I have to tell you. I personally don't believe there's any communication going on. Harry said before he hadn't spoken to them in a long time. I do not believe for one second that the king is going to give in to their demands. No way, no how. Um, William is helping to advise him on things and there's no way William's going to allow it. So, you know, all this talk back and forth, it, you know, they're saying, why can't the king just say to them no? Well, for all we know, the king already has said no and they just 
still haven't given their information on whether they're going to go or not. Does that make sense? And just in case you're unaware, here are some of the demands that I'm air quoting, some of the supposed demands. They're saying that they want Archie and Lilibet to be invited and have roles, but they're saying that's really not possible because the children are um, too small and they don't attend royal events of this scale due to restlessness and tantrums. Their second demand is because it's Archie's fourth birthday, a birthday that he won't even remember, they have asked for some sort of a celebration or acknowledgement to be factored into the day's plans. And of course, the family is concerned that uh, Meghan and Harry will post messages about his birthday during the coronation. Of course they will. One of the other things supposedly that's a demand is that Harry wants a face-to-face -face meeting with his father and brother. He wants a summit, but his position hasn't changed. He hasn't um, wavered and he's not going to come if he thinks the atmosphere will be toxic. And he says he wants to reconcile, but it's their call. Okay, well, he didn't get his apology, so there you go. And they don't want to meet with him because they know anything they say will be repeated. Then the, another demand is the balcony. They want to be on the balcony. They're not working royals. They should not be on the balcony. And another demand is security, which is actually, in my opinion, kind of stupid because there's going to be so many royals there. There's going to be so much royalty there. There's going to be more security than they're going to know what to do with. In the meantime, people are told to take this self-preservation stance with Harry and Meghan don't talk to them, don't go near them, sideline them, and go on with your coronation. And that's what I think they should do, and that's what I think they're going to do. Next up, you just can't make it up. Remember, Meghan Markle is going to write a book. We already know she's been shopping it around. Let's not forget the, the, the things she said in her cut interview about, I can say whatever I want, I didn't sign an NDA. Word is, she's going to write another book and she's going to trash the family in it like we would expect anything else. I told you guys before, they've been out longer than they were in. Their entire brand is wrapped up in whining about the royal family and it, people are tired of it. Yeah. And they have been warned to rebrand themselves away from the firm to come up with their own stuff to stop whining about the royals but i don't think they can now while we're talking about writing word out as i've told you before is that the tig is coming back well australian news had something to say about that and pointed out some very interesting things about that listen to this the, the tig is coming back so maybe there'll be more Oh, well, what could she possibly be blogging about now? Could, um, could it be like a lifestyle blog, like Gwyneth Paltrow's? Uh, maybe she can sell candles. Yeah, well, I think, um, I think there's only so much tossing around in your Californian mansion you can do. Apparently, Megan is bringing back her blog. Um, she obviously needed to find some kind of hobby that, that she's realised that uh, talking badly about the royal family only gets you so far. But it, it's interesting that, um, that a lifestyle blog and kind of wellness regimes and face creams and candles, it, it kind of goes head to head with her diehard commitment to women's causes as, as the diehard feminist that she is. Um, there was a great piece today written in the Telegraph about is another beauty site really what women need? I mean, the ironic thing is that Meghan Markle had every chance to be a great, great role model for women. She, she had the chance for real power. And instead, she gave that up and is now deciding to blog about candles and, and and wellness and and apparently relationship advice which is hilarious since oh. she's ostracized her entire family and uh arguably managed to ostracize her husband from his family as well now while they're talking about the tig they bring up her blog posts and once again her claims that she knew nothing at all about the royal family which, of course, from the TIG, we found out is untrue. Listen to this. All the information you just mentioned about what Megan has been saying in interviews, but we've also got what she has in old blog posts where she seemed to be quite fixated on the royal family. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just idiotic to claim that you don't know anything about the royal family. And the, the British royal family is arguably the biggest global brand in in the in the world um 
there's so much information that you can find of, of how she loved Diana and the Queen and, and how she was friends with, with people that had certain links to the royals, how she was friends of friends with Eugenie and... Um, and even Harry, there's links to his Eton friends. So yeah, um, I mean, it, not the smartest trick in the book, is it, to, to have all of these blog posts? All right, now we're gonna hop into our big story for today. People are really fed up with Harry and the fact that he was allowed into the United States on a visa. And people now want to know if he admitted to the multiple drug use on his application and they want Harry deported if he lied about taking cocaine before he moved to California, okay? Harry now is in a fight to keep his application secret because some people are demanding its release. They want to know if he told the truth. So, because obviously in his TV shows and in The Spare and all of this place, we found out that he's been using drugs for a while. So there's a group called the Heritage Foundation that said his visa must be released so the American taxpayer can understand whether Harry declared his drug use. Immigration law has harsh penalties for lying to immigration officials, including deportation and being barred from applying for citizenship. So Mike Howell, who is director of the Heritage Foundation Oversight Project, there's, there's 140 pages of information going back and forth. Obviously, I can't put up all of it. But what the Heritage Foundation did was request for public interest in light of the potential revocation of his visa, the release of whether he was properly vetted before entering the United States. People want to know if Biden gave him a pass. Because experts are saying that U.S. visa applications would usually thrown right out if there's a history of drug use. So they're saying if border officials didn't know, you know, his, his case raises questions whether he was given special treatment because he's a prince and Meghan Markle's husband, which would be illegal and not fair to other visa applicants who were turned away. Now, the U.S. State Department said that visa records are confidential under Section 222 of the Immigration and Naturalization Act, and that so they won't discuss the details of individual cases. But this will not be the end of this, I guarantee you. This is going to get pushed, and um, it's all been sent to Homeland Security, U.S. Border Protection, the U.S. Citizenship Immigration Service to bolster their freedom of information requests. So let's see. And once these people are involved, this could be ugly, really ugly. Now, you should know that the Heritage Foundation also compiled a dossier of evidence, including Harry's own admission in his memoir and various TV interviews where he admitted taking cocaine, marijuana, magic mushrooms, all of this. Now, they're saying that depending on the kind of visa that Harry came in on, uh, it could be up for renewal soon, and all of these admissions could make it not possible to you know, uh, renew his um, visa. Now, they're also claiming that public confidence in the government is going to suffer if they didn't properly vet Harry simply because who he is or he received preferential treatment, you know, due to who he is. So it'll be very interesting to see what they do. They say that they do this on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, does he have a spousal visa? Um, you know, what does he have? We'll find out soon. Well, this email came to me letting me know that Ben Browning apparently has left Archwell Productions and Audio in January. And at the end of this month, he's going back to Film Nation Entertainment as president of production. Interesting. So another revolving door and another person who left. Maybe they're upset you know, with him because of the way the Netflix documentary went. I mean, after all, he was the one over it. Interesting. All right, moving on. Next up, I have to tell you that Tigger, my 15-year-old cat who sleeps 23 hours a day, was suddenly playful this morning. It was very odd. But, of course, I grabbed my phone and I took some video. Watch this. Somebody's being playful this morning. <laughs> Ow! 
Ooh. Ooh. Tigger. Tigger. All right, you guys, you know what I want. Leave those comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads. If you've already hit the button, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go up into the description box where you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon, as well as a physical address if there's anything that you want to mail. For those of you who've donated money through my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.